Yo, yo, mic check, mic check. What's good? What's happening? What's cracking? I guess you see the title today. Hit the link, share the show, put it on your Facebook, put it on your Instagram, spread it around the universe, spread it around the universe. Hello, is it on? Yeah, it's on now. It's on the internet? Yep, it's on the internet. Blob, the host. All right. Can I share my screen and all that jazz? Yes, sir. I'm muting out. No, I'm going to go train, train, train. What time you working till today? Uh, probably three or four. Oh, no, I'm all right. All right. Let you, uh, let you have it. I want to say thank you and Ashe. Uh, all right. So, one second uh, to the Melanated Nation. I'd like to say hello. I'll try to make this as quick ish and as streamlined as possible. A um, couple of things that I've said previously for people who have been watching the channel, but uh, but uh, I guess it's, it's always good to, I don't wanna say rehash things because there are people new to the page, et cetera, but hopefully to that like on uh you know something new for somebody but with that said what i primarily want to deal with is actually once again to share uh resources that people can attain to if they're truly interested in exploring some of the questions and topics that they may have regarding the enslavement of africans and how it played out historically something that we I chose intentionally not to cover primarily as the main focus. Our main focus here was more the story of a free people, but nonetheless, um, the story, a major, major part of the story where we come into it has been the enslavement of Africans in Americas. Now that in itself has been diluted in a number of ways, but to just get right to it, um, the rhetoric needs to stop and I hope to continue to be a part of process to give people the information to cut right to it because some of these petted, these que uh, questions and just topics are juvenile and they're really silly at this point, considering we're in an environment where the greater culture wants to completely wipe us from the historical record. And what we're saying now is we have this perverted, distorted view that we want as evidence of the things that we have done in our contribution to the historical record. So basically it's too much noise that's surrounding a real history that needs to be put forth for people to understand and learn from. And the problem is that you have now Younger, younger peoples or cultures who are coming into things who have no frame of reference, where their uh, association or contact with information is cloudy at best. So there's no way that they can see the truth because it's, they've never been exposed to it. Similar to <laughs> the history of a lot of Black people not having access to a quote unquote real story. But with that said, in particular, I just want to deal with in the beginning uh, a couple of, hold on, a couple of things that I can share for people that they can get right now where it won't be something magical and so forth and so on before we go on. So I'm going to share my screen and I thank people for tuning in. Um, 
and what have you. This is not a rhetoric talk. You know how I like to do in particular. Let's just get down to something that you can, you know, sink your teeth into and take with you. One of the things for the, I wish Sean and Dahoudi in particular were in here because they know how I, there was one resource that you can get right now, folks, that will help you in your journey to put things together. Is this book called Documents Illustrative? I can't go to my YouTube, but hopefully if somebody's a mod, I could put it in the chat. Documents Illustrative of the History of the Slave Trade. Let me go to, this is I think five volumes, my friends. You can get this right now. It's not magic. It's not a thousand dollars you have to pay. Let me give you the full name so you can go. This particular from Happy Trust has it. I think Columbia or Penn, you can see it free as well. Well, documents illustrative of the history of the slave trade to America. This book, this series of, of books is actually a books and materials that they have lost. Et cetera, people can Google it on those authors, I think five series. This is, these are the quote, the facts, if you will. Okay, or one major source, I should say, for the primaries or the facts. Something that you can have where it's not, okay, what does somebody say about this? What you'll learn and you'll see through this, uh, once you get it for free, people in the chat can get it right now, is you will see that as far as you're concerned or may be concerned, you have, can I zoom in? So look at your table of contents just from volume one. So you hear names and people talk about these things and in particular how Uncle Truth, good old Uncle Truth, been trying to tell you from the beginning. Well, she starts a little bit later, so we'll give ourselves a little bit more credit because we start at 1415 or 1418, but nonetheless, 1441 and the discovery and conquest of Guinea and the story behind that and how this whole thing starts to set off in the modern day frame. These are not just her words, as you can see, these are alone just the documents. Okay, so what you would have to do at this point is establish, hey, we're gonna put all this deceit in there so when they read this four or five centuries later, they had no intention of you ever knowing or reading any of this to think that you would become a factor in them, <gasps> Illuminati and then these things. Right? So once again, you have this right in front of you. Is, is the screen showing? Yeah, it is showing. So you can see it. Documents, illustrative of the history of the slave trade. This is just volume one. And in the volumes, we can see, we're going to the 17th century, the Guinea Company. You have uh, people who asked me about Kate Verde yesterday. Here's the voyage of Pierre von der Broek. So we know he's what? He's Dutch. So we know the Dutch have influence on Kate Verde in 1606 going there. You see, you want the deposition of John Hawkins instead of just talking about John Hawkins. Well, let's go to page 70, just for one example. And sorry if this is dizzifying. I just, oh, maybe I could just type 70 right here. 70. Ah, uh, shouldn't have did that. Now it's going to take forever to load. And then it didn't even take me to page 70. I'm kind of blood clot madness. So I just want to show you, because we were talking about John Hawkins, how we could easily get to the documents relative or illustrative of what we're talking about when we talk about John Hawkins in instance of 66. Hmm. Come on. 67, 68, 69, hopefully, I'm hopefully at a low, folks are trying to catch up if you see it blurry, 70. So here we go. Once the lows are clears up, come on. And through the magic of Negro vision, come on, come on. Okay, so where were we, 70. So you can see now, look, here we go, folks. Deposition of who? John Hawkins of the city of London, gentlemen. 
that he, the deponent, despondent, uh, with the fleet of aforesaid, did arrive upon the coast of Guinea. Did John Hawkins go to Guinea? Here is the record of it. When? On the coast of Guinea in November of 1567, with this deponent, these are legal documents and other merchants appointed by the said company for the assistance of traffic did purchase, were Africans purchasing Guinea, we're about to find out from just one of a plethora of primary documents, okay? For the assistance of traffic did purchase and buy a good quantity of Negroes, were they referred to as Negroes? Yes, they were. All things get blown up shortly if you take your time and look at the actual resources if you really want to know what happened in the truth. Okay, that's the first sentence dealing with John Hawkins. Didn't mention Illuminati, didn't mention, uh, uh, I don't know, the ghost in the shell or his relation to the Le Levitical priests or nothing. It says, and from there, what did he do with those Africans? Departed with them unto the West Indies. This is 1569. It's showing exactly what John Hawkins did. And it's also showing you what, folks, from the beginning of this first document that I presented, the slave trade happened. These are documents illustrative of them. This is not hyperbolic speech. These are historical records of business, the business of taking Negroes and transferring them to West Indies for free labor. That is called the transatlantic slave trade because it went across the Atlantic Ocean in transit. It moved. What moved? The boats, which were real, which transported the people. Here it is once again. This is a legal document about John Hawkins. He had a boat. He was a captain and a sailor. He took his boat to Guinea, which is in Africa. That said boat did what? Bought Negroes, those Africans, and what he do? He departed via boat ship with them unto the West Indies people. I have to go this slow because people seem to be really dense about comprehension skills. That's a really muddled sentence, and I apologize, but intentionally complicating things because they just don't really want the truth because the fantasy is so much of a dope, so much more of a dopamine rush. This is the reality of it. The fantasy is more of a dopamine rush to the brain and justifies your condition right now than analyzing what really happens so we can move forward. This is called the matrix for a reason. It feels good to think, imagine you was a, uh, what did I hear last night, an Irish somebody and a this and a that, whatever. Because you think, one, this is the only story, and I agree with you on that part. This is why my channel, our channel in particular, did not, does not really focus on the enslavement of our people. Did anybody notice over the past decade? Most of the things, most of the things that we talk about about the free people, to change the narrative even with that. But before we get to the free people, we have to understand that those free people have a history well beyond slavery. If you look at the videos, we have uh, West African videos and talking about the historicity and our connectedness to West and Central Africa. Yes, those originated on this channel. But besides that, we have a history right here in the Americas. I guess that's some of my quarter FBA Dojin sentiment uh, slipping out. But nonetheless, seriously, the point being that the connection being the, between the two, let's go slow again, is a transatlantic experience. We are Atlantic Africans. I didn't make up that phrase. Uh, where's Sanab? I think that's uh, Gazala said that, but I like using it because it's better than uh, the other one that Sanab hates. I can't remember at the moment. But we are Atlantic Africans. Why? Because before we was came here, we was came here. Many of us were connected 
and closer to the Atlantic Ocean in Western Central Africa. And when you're on this side, obviously Atlantic Ocean. But nonetheless, we're back to John Hawkins and reading a legal document stating to you within two sentences, one, folks, the slave trade was real. John Hawkins had a ship. He took his ship to Guinea and bought and took Africans. He took those Africans via a ship to the West Indies, it says, and from thence departed with them unto the West Indies. So what does that prove in two sentences, folks? It, it proves that one, you are utterly stupid to keep asking me the question about where are the ships when it says right here that John Hawkins went to Africa and went to the West Indies in ships. How else did John Hawkins get there? Does anybody listening? So the conversations and the questions that people are posing are utterly stupid at this point, and it shows your ignorance. And it shows why you should be relegated to this, this weird sect of social media that has been carved out. We're supposed to be some knowledge foundation. No. This is the light shining on the lost Negro and his disconnectedness from his history, which I agree with them, was intentional. It's intentional for us to be at this point not knowing who the hell we are or what really happened to us. But it was also intentional they put these records where we could now, 400 years later, read about the dirty, dastardly deeds, I like that one, that John Hawkins did to our people. Facts. These are the documents illustrative of those deeds. For you to come along and say, well, that didn't happen. But what do you mean it didn't happen? And then you shift the goalposts, or it didn't happen like the way they said it happened. Well, will people in the chat otherwise slow down? Who is they? And what did they say? Did anybody ask those questions that always, well, they didn't happen like they said, well, who is they? And what did they say? And you find out that they don't even know who they are or what they said. It becomes a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo, Columbus did this and uh, a Maxim, Omec, whatever garbage. Not a document the first. Folks, I haven't moved off of something that I just gave free. There were volumes of this, which I hope somebody in the chat put it in there or, or, or else. One person out of the 30 something people, that's all I want is one person. It's called, once again, Documents Illustrative. Means that these are the documents and they're gonna illustrate them to you via the text, obviously, of the history of the slave trade to America. This is just volume one. So now let's get to more because this will help you even more about this whole John Hawkins and his ship or whatever. Yes, it's all in the documents and I'm illustrating to you. Okay, so it says in which country this opponent and his William Clark with other factors, those are the people paying, did traffic with the inhabitants there. Those inhabitants were those Guineas, Africans and did receive in truck an exchange of wares, which means, sorry folks, they were trading with Africans also. <clears throat> Nobody leaves unscathed in this. This is called the truth. Everybody gets touched by it. It says with other factors did traffic with the inhabitants and did receive in trucks an exchange of wares. It was called the slave trade. <clears throat> Are you questioning? It was called the slave trade. When you go slow, it makes perfect sense when people keep fighting what's in front of their face and scared to death to talk to truth, period. Because why? I sit up here and give all of 30 some people listen to y'all can do the same thing along with me. This is not me with some magic. Look how much more I know than y'all. Y'all can see it and have the what? The documented proof. So stop entertaining the stupid. John Hawkins had a ship. Let's go. I'm not going to say it again. I'm going to keep going. 
So he exchanged his wares and commodities to the said company's use, and behold, so much treasure and commodities as amounted to the sum of 29,743 pesos of gold at the least, every peso of gold being of the value of 15 reals or plate Spanish money. It says in our octavum, Arlem, DC, that after the traffic, here's the part you may want to pay close attention to the Jesus. Did John Hawkins have a ship named Jesus? Yes, he did. How can we say it's truth? Well, here is the legal document naming John Hawkins ships. The Jesus, the swallow, the grace of God, and the angel articulated departing from Cartagena. So now you see it gets deeper because it's Cartagena in England? No. We see that this story gets even deeper. Well, I thought John Hawkins was from England. He was, but what caught it? See how it opens up? Bought in them from thence upon the port of Vera Cruz, Negroes of good, excuse me, of goodly stature. Hmm? Hmm? Shape and personage and young of years. These are the ones they got from Guinea. Goodly stature, shape and personage, and young of years, being the choice and principle of all the Negroes which were gotten and purchased this last voyage at Guinea. I'm going to leave that part for there. Hopefully, people then take it and go even further. Now you have been given, once again, a free resource. There were what, six, seven volumes of this with what? The documents, not somebody jaw jacking and interpreting, you reading the documents and coming to your own conclusions. Because these are what you call, I know some people hate this word, primary documents. No, I ain't read this in nobody's book. These are the documents. Well, it's Elizabeth Donald's book technically, but she ain't just talking about them. These are the actual documents. Number two, folks. Hopefully people got that. Uh, Vyasa, Khalil, somebody put that in the chat for me, please. Number two. There's another resource, I wish Sean Dehuti was here as well, that I've been trying to tell you knuckleheads and Negrotopia for years now, that you need to get, which will help further flesh out what you're searching for. And that is this book called, let me go to the top so you can see the cover. I told you, nothing's gonna be hidden. The Slave Trade. Newer people around, probably never heard me say it, so I'm going to be fair. Documents illustrative of the slave trade to America. So when they come around, y'all, and I pull out the same sources, it ain't no trick. They're all right here. If you talk to me, I'm going to refer to the same sources that I tell people about. So ain't no, oh, you come to debate. No, all the information I'm going to tell you is right out there. You ain't got nothing for it yet. It's been a decade. It's the difference around here. You want to talk to me for here you go right here. Here goes Elizabeth Don. This is exactly what I'm, what I'm going to use. I'm going to run through here and show you all these slave ship uh, uh, law cases or whatever, and them taking people. And you're going to argue that the slave trade didn't happen. Who wins right off the bat? You look stupid. Here's the slave trade by Hugh Thomas. This book is important and vital because he gives a narrative in the story dating back to, he gives, uh oh, some of y'all conscious gonna like this. He starts even going talking to about the Egyptians and the ancient peoples and the Romans and the Greeks and their slave systems. Why? So you could then when you sit down and digest, understand that many of the codes that were reinterpreted came from Roman law. This is the point importance of understanding continuum. So you're not completely off base when you say, oh, this is all Roman law, but there is an order to the things that most people have gotten and got it in a perverted fashion. What does that mean? Even the freedom process has 
the rituals, even the rights of the slave, for instance, go back to Roman law, all of this stuff. You, you can get the book for yourself, folks. It's called The Slave Trade by Hugh Thomas. It's important and vital because those documents that you're going to read about from Elizabeth Donnan, the actual documents, let me do this in real time so people can see what I'm talking about. Hopefully I'm not going too fast and people see this is not sleight of hand or trying to seem smarter than you. Everything I'm doing, you can do along with me. Don't let people fool you. It's how bad or how interested you are, I should say, and wanting to know these things. It's not some guru or telling you this is, no, you can read it for yourself. I can trust that my people, black folks can read. They just need to be given the material. Here you go. This is what you're asking when you go, well, slavery didn't have where the ships. Well, here's the documentation that it happened. Are you denying that before we get to where the ships? See how that works, folks? Where the ships? It says John Hawkins went to Gone, Guinea and took them people to West Indies. Did that happen? Are you saying that didn't happen? Ah, see how that works? Where the ships? Here go the document right here that said in 1569, John Hawkins went to Guinea, snatched up and trafficked, excuse me, traded for some Negroes and took them Negroes to the West Indies. And you sent up there arguing about where the ships. It looks stupid, folks. Anybody feeling me yet? Where the ships? Oh, so what I was going to do, I'm sorry, I ran past it right on my jibs. My fault, y'all. What I was going to show you is Hugh Thomas, what he does, he then provides, he just, how do you say, I want to syncretize, not the works, not the works. Makes a synergy for these primary sources in showing a narrative that people can follow and digest. So what I'm saying, instead of reading the straight primaries, which I love, but most people want some sort of a story to follow. So as you can see, the first one is that conquest of Guinea in 1441-48, folks. You see how this works? So what we're gonna do is go to Hugh Thomas now, and we see when we go, where is the slave trade? Oh, it went away. So when we go to Hugh Thomas now and the slave trade by Hugh Thomas, somebody please put that in chat so people that are interested now have two sources. Once again, please, uh, one of the mods or whomever put that in the chat. So what I want to show you the, the correlation to what I'm trying to tell you about that in this story, if you will, is this is not just the primaries. Now, now old Huey, who is one of the foremost experts, not on no slave trade, but on the Spanish and Portuguese friends. So try it if you want. Yes, he's the one that's right on the stuff of what's going on in Andalusia and all this other stuff as well. So what you see here is in chapter two, he talks about 144, I can't just highlight that word. Yeah, 1444 and what have you in Zarara and talking about these things, right? You don't have to just believe his narrative. You can play along and have this right by your side and go right to us, folks. This is how we do it. Okay, here's the documents. It says, with the origins of the institution of slavery and of the trafficking slaves, the documents here presented do not deal, right? Neither slavery nor the slave trade was new to mankind in 1441, right? So it's telling you that. Didn't start there. But what we're talking about is the fact that after 1444, slaves were carried from the African coast by water rather than over land was scarcely justified one and regarding the 15th century as the beginning of a new commerce. That is fact. Hugh Thomas talks about that in chapter one. But when we go back to the book, we see that, what did Hughes Thomas start with? 1444, so you see how this works, y'all? If y'all playing along, you ain't gotta believe just Hugh Thomas and his narrative. You have the what? Documents illustrative of what Hugh Thomas is talking about in the slave trade. Is anybody listening yet? Is anybody listening yet? 
Oh, you talking about what he's saying in the everything that he is saying is not only sourced in his book, but once again, if you are truly interested, is once again the key. What you can do is read through the primary documents for yourself. That's just one example. Yes? Before we go any further, I need some, what is it? I don't know, put something in the chat to let me know that people are following. Am I talking smart Negro rhetoric? Is it just, you think I'm pump faking or trying to sound all smart? Like I need some feedback because it seems to be going over by me, by us time and time again. Is it not sticking? Is it, does it look like I'm making something up here? This is what I, I, I want to understand. Is this something that you can't do yourself? Is it something to say, I got in a secret stash and you need to follow me or believe everything I say? Or is it something that I'm challenging you, all of us, here go the materials, now there's no excuse. If you really want to know, well, here you go. Do we understand how this works? This is something that you're going to get in the collegiate levels and whatever. That I'm saying the problem is we can't have, everybody's not going to go that route. They need it now. Give it to them now. This, once again, I can't, I can't, I'm going to be done with Elizabeth Donnan. So I'm going to work. Elizabeth Donnan. Do you understand? Yep, white woman. Nonetheless, here we go. When I say, what is this from? The Law Book Exchange. Why? Because these are the documents compiled in four books. $495. That's just one. So you can pay the four ninety five, or you can trust your brother when he tell you, well, hey, folks, hopefully some of my friends and buddies just put in the chat, because here you go for free. Here you go for free. If you really want to know what happened, here you go. Don't ask to debate me, because I wasn't there. I'm going to get what? The prime. Mary sources, the documents illustrative of what I am saying. Why? So you don't have to believe me. You see it for yourself. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, 50 people, for tuning in. If you like it so far, would you please like the video? And the Cash App is HistoryMan718 if you want to support. I appreciate everything. History Man 718. With that said, we're dealing exclusively with this history and these documented sources. So let's go further. Now what we're gonna do, this question of did the slave trade and when all this other nonsense, we're now going to have to address other documents and ask them to make sense. Here is 1773 from the Charleston Gullah Stand Up, South Carolina newspaper. I'm telling people that's new here, this is one of the things that I am proud to bring forth to a great number of people. I'm telling you that a great source of finding out who our people were and what was going on and nuances culturally and otherwise are slave runaway ads because they provide some type of descriptions and clues to figure it out. That's a tip for the younger research or whatever. Runaway ads. Don't just see getting your emotions and see runaway ads. Read through them. But with that said, we'll see that what? Runaway from the plantation of Henry Lorenz um, writes, in September 1772, the new Negroes via Somerset, his country name, uh, Massery, his country name, Massery, let me get this off the screen, right? And very black of the 
Mandingo country. I'm going to leave there. Hopefully, this is just scans so people can see. So they ask you questions about where your people from. I don't know. I could very well be related. Not me. I kind of have a, a great picture. But Henry Lorenz was a black man from Mandingo country in Charleston, South Carolina. If they ask Gullah, well, who are your people? And he say, I'm from the Mandingo people as well. We clearly see that Mandingo people, as well as Guinea people, were in Charleston, South Carolina. How do you say Guinea? It didn't say nothing about no Guineas, but you're going to say, well, his country name must be about five feet. This is another one. Broad face, his great toes shorter than the others of the Guinea country. We now see two people from Africa in America in 1773. How did they get here? And you asking me where the ships are. Anybody listening yet? See how stupid it is? Hmm? Why are you asking me where the ships are? And I'm asking you how in the hell the people from Guinea in Mandingo country, which is in Africa, it's not a snuff film they're describing, end up in Charleston, South Carolina. Let's go on. This is not me saying these things. You're asking for sources. I'm giving you, I wasn't there. Runaway, this is the same one from the subscriber on Friday night last, three new Negro men of the, here we go, Angola country. So in one ad, in one primary document, I'll show you three African nations. Do you think you really want this smoke? This is not super science. This is something that we're supposed to be teaching our children so they can run with this. Like, wow, you're teaching me how to be a detective was something that I pushed away from, and I get it because it didn't want to run away as, and we're thinking of our roots instead of saying, okay, we need to teach the babies to back some of the emotion out of it. I know it's painful, and we want to slave in the process, but look what we can extract. Why? Because they never thought we would read. It was never the intention. So why would they put the technology in the newspaper if there was never no intent for you to read? <laughs> Answer that, Jack. Why would they put Angola, Mandingo, telling you where these people are from if you wasn't reading newspaper? Were they lying to each other? Were the ships the Mirage in Charleston that came in from that part of West Africa? Oh, we'll get to that too. So, we see in one ad, Gullah, they want to talk. I'm pulling out, they want the sources. This is not me saying this. This is not me reading from nobody's book. This is me showing my people, look, y'all, this was actually in the South Carolina Gazette and Country Journal, September 21st, 1773, on page three. Let's go back. How about some more? Okay, well, this is 1770. Brought to the workhouse. October 20th, 1770, two Negro wenches who called themselves Bensaw and Kumba. Bensaw is of the Mandingo country, says her master is dead and both belong to one mistress. She is four feet nine inches high of black complexion. Did they call them black? They described them as what? Of black complexion. So Africans are described as black. Her country, country marks. Do you know what country marks are? Those those marks on the face when you see the West Africans come over today look like they got scratched by a tiger. Those are called country marks. Let's go slower, true. Don't act like that they know country marks. Once again, folks, you can do this at home. Country mark. A country mark is a type of scarification Noted among 18th century and 19th century slaves brought to where, folks? Does anybody hear the bombs going off in the background? Brought to North America as part of the transatlantic slave trade. 
country marks were commonly used to identify individual slaves and were frequently mentioned where newspaper advertisements. They're going to say, he just talking about Wikipedia, my people who in here are going to go, no, he didn't. This nigga got the sources. Who's relying on just Wikipedia? Wikipedia is talking about the sources that I got. <laughs> And I'm trying to show why people don't believe all that nonsense. You ain't got to say, oh, you reading white man's books. No, Negro, we read nothing but sources. Elizabeth Donning gave you four, five volumes on documents illustrative of the slave trade for one. We are now going through primary documents denoting the people running away from those plantations were Mandingo, were Guinea, were Congo, and were Angolan. And we just getting started. The cash app is History Man 718 if you've learned at least one new thing this Saturday morning. Now it's noon on the dot. Now, what are we doing in here that takes super science or Illuminati or whatever? Nothing, friends. I'm giving it to my people for free. And they're seeing it for themselves. Ain't no sleight of hand. Let's go on. Well, we got runaways all over the place. I'm going to go run away again. Hit it up. Well, looky here. You want them born in the West Indies? Got those two. How about ones from the Gold Coast, Gullah? We ain't mentioned them yet. So we're going we gonna to cover the whole West Africa for them today. Okay. So this fella run away from the subscribers plantation in Albemarle County, a tall, slim Negro. Did they call the Africans Negroes? Yes. Did they call them Black? Yes. Name George. He is marked in the face. We know those are called what? Country marks as the Gold Coast slaves. How did the people from the Gold Coast start running away from plantations in Virginia? And you are asking me about where the ships? How did they swim the whole Atlantic Ocean just to be enslaved then is my question. How did, we are not known to be the best swimmers. We some good swimmers, but we are not Michael Phelps. How did the man, Dingo, Congo, Angola, and Guinea swim across the Atlantic Ocean to go to the plantation and run away? Hmm? You see how stupid this gets, folks? Where there's so much more we could unpack by even looking at something like this. But then this helps actually put pieces together because now we can see where we come from and where they start to take us from. <sighs> Let's keep going, yes? Okay. Well, do 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 do. God, we could do this all day. What you want? Okay, African born runaway. Here goes another. I mean, I could do this until I'm green in the face, folks. Here goes another one. Runaway from subscriber plantation in Chesterfield County in July last. A Negro man named Sterling, about six feet high. So, blah, 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 blah. Let me get down here. He is African born. Are they just trying to call the people this? It's telling you in this that who? Is this runaway from the plantation, an individual who is African born? How did the African born man in 1770 get to a plantation in Virginia? And you gonna look me in the face thinking you smart asking me, well, where the ships? <laughs> Ask me where the ships at, y'all. Where the ships? How did he get in Virginia? Huh? We're gonna keep going. 
just more all day all day and night i could do this what other runaways we got okay oh how about some runaways with locks hmm? how about that that's entertaining 1776 come on it says run away from subscribers plantation in sussex county on delaware on the eighth day of april 1776 a negro wench named sarah about 20 years of age well made in about five feet or five or six inches with a tolerable with tolerable black lips and a down lock and a down lock what do we have in here folks he got it all call all of them lies and ask me and i'll give you here to go to records did they have locks yep hair was locked thick lips my goodness you see it hmm? but we go on okay so we want oh gambia here we go who was brought to the jail a tall gambia negro fellow with the white negro cloth jacket and breeches taken up as miss jones plantation how did the tall gambian negro get to charleston south carolina Why would the South Carolina Gazette on, on June 7, 1740, on page three, it was a Tuesday, say, hey, let's just distort history for the next 500 years and put this in our newspaper and make up some story about some tall Gambian Negro and say he ran away. Oh, what clothes are you gonna say he had on? Well, say he had on Negro cloth jacket and breeches. Do you see how stupid this all sounds? You think they planned this in 1740? America's not even America yet. Anybody catch that yet? This is 1740. Huh? Okay. <laughs> oh man, what else we got? What else we want? Okay, here's another attribute of us. Listen close. So this is informative. Another reason why slave, I hope that some of the younger people again do this. Slave runaway ads, once again, are very vital sources. And we're going to show even more if this is improving it shortly. So runaway from a subscriber in St. Stephen's Parish, South Carolina, about 15 months since two Negro fellows, Will is a Cooper. So what professions did the enslaved do? You can say Cooper which was a barrel maker. You see how we slow it down and it's how the children, but what did they make the slaves do, mommy and daddy? Well, they wasn't just picking cotton, son or daughter. They made them do all these other tasks, like building barrels. This one was a rough carpenter, like carpentry. Well, were they all black or whatever? It says, well, no, George was a yellowish complexion. Slim made a little knock knee, his teeth filed. So listen closely, folks. George, who was an African, was a yellowish complexion and had his, let me get it, teeth filed. How do I know he's Africa? And his country marks in his face. Were Africans of all colors? enslaved not all mulattoes you see the questions we answering well yes because we have primary documents of george being of a yellowish complexion who had his teeth filed like the west africans the central africans did and his country marks which we just read was and phenomenon in this time period amongst West Africans were the Africans every color from darkest night to yellowish. And they wasn't all mulattoes. The answer now is yes, Ogun and Gullah drop more bombs. You see how this works? <laughs> I mean, 
Did I make it up? Did I make it up? Why did I say it was African? Because I said, we know what country marks are now, and that goes hand in hand with filed teeth that we know about. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, we're gonna get this some more. Slow down now, we, I got you. I got you today, I got a little bit more time. Um, what do I want to get to? I want to get to uh, something that's going to be more, if I do, it'll probably come up if I put rice. And by the way, folks, this isn't just me searching aimlessly. These are all my 15,589 clippings. So I'm searching my own archive. So here is a rice coast Negro. This is 1768. This is before America's America. We have rice coast. A Negro fellow of the rice coast calls himself Peter, says his master name is Mr. Sumter and live at Nelson's Ferry. This is from the South Carolina Gazette. This is 1768. Now we go to, well, what is the rice coast? Rice coast. Where's this guy from? We will find folks. Why is Gullah keep popping up? What is this? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. What happened? Why Gullah keep popping up? Hmm. Rice coast. Gullah. Let me just search for it. Control F. Rice. It's not going to go. Coast. No? Oh, it's not going to work for me right now. Well, here you go. I just found it. British planters in the Caribbean and southern colonies of North America refer to this area as the Grain Coast or Rice Coast. They're talking about Africa. Many, watch how it comes together even more, many of the tribes are of Mandy. Did we not see Mandingos in South Carolina? So some of the Gullah are Mandingo and not necessarily Gola. So when Queen Quet, the queen of it all, comes and tell you, no, it wasn't just one set of people called no Gola or Gullah. They were an amalgamation of, she says it all the time, she leads off with Mandy and Congo. Now you understand, one, who was coming up under this Gullah banner? Two, they came from Africa. And unless at this point you're saying they swam over here. Huh? Is the live off? Wait, hold on. Now I'm scared, Rob Warren. Oh, man, Rob Warren got me shook. Gullah, am I still on? Please don't tell me. Somebody just put a one if I'm still on. Let's go. Am I still on? Oh. No? It's off? Huh? Okay, I'm good. Thank you, Gullah. Come on, Rob Boyne. You're going to mess up my... All right, here we go. Here we go. So what I was saying is we clearly see, we go back to our primaries again, that if Peter... And they said he was from the Rice Coast. We got to now say, well, were people from the Rice Coast enslaved in America? Yes, they were. Is this another example of did the slave trade happen? Yes, it did. Well, who were some of the people and what nations? Well, we got Angolans. We got Mandis. We got Golas. We got Congos. We got Guineas, we got people from the Rice Coast. Well, how did you know that? Them people told you that. No, those people ran away from plantations and they wanted them back. Those people who enslaved them put descriptions in the paper so they could get their property back. They were as descriptive as possible to give clues on who those people were. He's got country marks, he's got foul teeth, and he's just from the Mandingo country. 
And if y'all remember right, last week, a Mandingo ship just came over here. He's one of the new Negroes. See how this all comes together? Did they swim over here? <laughs> Did they swim over here? Coast. Coast. Gold Coast, here we go, folks. Now we're going to get to it. We're going to go coasting for the next 64 people for the next 10 minutes. We're going to take, we're going to go coasting. Maybe I'll do Africa and America, but it depends on how fast we can get through this. And I feel some comprehension is taking place. 1755, get into your heads. This is before America is America. These are the British colonies. They are in West Africa and they are taking over forts from the Portuguese, Dutch, and otherwise, French and Belgians, what have you. They are now taking those people that they're enslaving and sending them to North America. So a parcel of choice, Gold Coast slaves. I'm gonna leave it here so you can see it. So who came in to be sold in Baltimore? a parcel of choice, Gold Coast slaves. Are you saying those people who were enslaved were African? Yes. Well, where them people from? Hey, some people may not know specifically, but we have enough of regions to know that we are of Mandy and Guinea and Congo and Angolan, and we are an amalgamation of Western Central Africa. Well, do you have proof? Well, yes. My people were not only enslaved, but they ran away and were sold. And these people done put advertisements in the newspapers selling us telling the people and advertising because we were property of where they done stole and traded those Negroes. Now we got the Gold Coast. We done dealt with the rights coast. Well, folks, what do we do logically? Well, what is the Gold Coast and where was that? Gold Coast. The Gold Coast, folks, is in West Africa. So we say, and everybody will sense, sees, and knows that the transatlantic trade, slave trade involved Western Central Africa and Europe and the Americas, primarily. We know that Gold Coast Africans were slaves in America. One, he just pulled out one of a thousand ads selling them in Baltimore in 1755. That's how we know, and this is one of a bazillion examples. So when we say, well, where's the Gold Coast? That makes sense because the Gold Coast is in West Africa. So now what you can also do, folks who are playing old, if you go to your documents, I'm pretty sure she got, she called, it's called a number of things. What if I should type just gold, I don't put coast. And while that's going, and I'm sure that'll take a minute. Okay, here we go. Gold Coast. African Coast, Gold Coast. We're going to see that we can go to, just give me the page. Here we go. Guinea Coast. Give me this one in particular. We're going to find out when we go to our documents illustrative of these things that there are also documents on the Gold Coast. In fact, you can find <laughs> these sources are all free, so get it. It won't go to the specific page on me, but you can do this and search through the book. Y'all see it right here Gold Coast, the histories of Gambia and the Gold Coast. See, so when we go back, see how this is all working together to our other primary source, and we understand that we have now a multitude of primary sources outlining West Africans in West Africa, as well as now in Baltimore and Charleston and South Carolina and West Indies. And you ask me, well, how did they get here? 
Well, we su we supplied John Hawkins for one white man because you believe him. Well, here's a manifest. Here's a record of him going to buy Guinea Africans and steal and take them to the West Indies. Did he make them swim and did he swim himself? Well, if he didn't swim. He's the one, amongst many others, who brought them to the Americas. That's how they got there. Then his question comes, well, who are they? We have then now gone to this to show, well, once again, folks, who are they? Are they Mandy? Did we see that? Angola, Congo, Guinea, Gold Coast, Rice Coast. And so when we go further, we'll see that, actually, let me go back here. We see uh, instruments of the transatlantic slave trade. This is how deep these things get. Once again, slave runaway as are a viable and very critical source for understanding our history. It's painful because they are slave runaway as They provide clues on who our people were. This is what we extract from them. What, what they look like to a degree, what they wore, what they ate, where they lived, boom. So now we see a parcel of choice Gold Coast slaves, boys and girls, likewise a parcel of good Barbados rum. What were the instruments of the slave trade on this side, this triangular slave trade? Well, it was rum being sent to West and Central African kingdoms to make them alcoholics in exchange for what? Your black behind, sorry. England wasn't drinking rum like that. They don't drink rum like that to this day. So where was the rum gone? Ha, ha, ha. Another question figured out. Well, what was the trade on the triangular trade in the Americas? Well, this is why they brought the people here to do the sugar, which was like the cocaine of the day. And the rum would go to where? Which Rum, which is made from the runoff, mind you, which would go to who? West and Central African slaves. Speaking of John Hawkins, John Hawkins was probably the most decorated member of the Queen. I think she's the reason that the Queen started the Navy. Let me show you the connection to that rum and what they were doing and how so they were so <sighs> taken over by it. Here's another one for you folks. Go back to your Wikipedia machine. Watch this. The word I want you to Google is grog. What is grog? During the early modern period, sailors required significant quantities of fresh water on extended voyages. Since desalinating seawater was not practical, fresh water was taken aboard in casks, but quickly developed algae and became slimy. Stagnant water was sweetened with beer or wine to make it palatable. I want you to know what grog is for this. Following England's Conquest of Jamaica, well, war, who was doing the sugar in Jamaica? Let me just start there. In 1655, one half of the imperial pint of rum gradually replaced beer and brandy as the drink of choice. The reason I want you to know this is because the procedure became part of the official regulations of the Royal Navy in 1756. Short answer. To cut to the chase, the official drink of the English Royal Navy is grog, which is rum, which was the product of the slave trade. You see the connection between John Hawkins, the Navy, and the, the drink of the Royal Navy. You, your parent, your, your ancestors were taken, and amongst the things they had to toil in Jamaica, Barbados, and other wash world was to make the official drink of the British Navy. Rum was an essential part of this. Sugar was the cocaine of the day. Okay. So now when we go back once again and we see this, I've done this before. There's a few people who are in here now, so maybe I'll do it again. But we'll, I'll get to that in a second if I remember it. So what we have, okay, let me go. We could do it this way. I'm going to now go, uh, oh, before I go there, I got I to gotta bring one more in here. I'm going to type windward. 
Really? I know I got Windward Coast. Stop trying to play me. Am I spelling it wrong? Coast again. Coast. Green Coast. Did I cover Green Coast? Oh, yeah, there's a Green Coast. I think I, no, I didn't say Green Coast. Well, folks, Runaway 1767 before America is America. Subscribe about six months ago, a Negro named Boston, who was supposed to be gone to Santee. He is a likely fellow about 16 years of age. Do they take youngsters? Yes. And near five feet 11. Had a spur on when he went away and is of the Grain Coast country. You know, we're going to do again, right? They don't mention another coast. Let's go back and see where the Grain Coast is. Grain Coast. Well, looky here. It's in a place. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't got Negro land big as hell on the map. <laughs> and guess where this is, folks? It's that same region of Western Africa. What and how did the Negro, another one from West Africa, end up in Charleston, South Carolina in 1767, was there a great West African swimming contest that the rest of us were not privy to? I ask you again, was there, there an African aquatic festival to see who could swim the Atlantic Ocean and the winning prize was you was gonna end up picking cotton in Charleston, hot as Matter of fact, you're going to go over there and you're going to take make some rice. The winner of this swimming contest will make rice for generations. Is that what happened? Well, then how in the hell did the people from the Grain Coast, the Rice Coast, the Windward Coast, the Pepper Coast, the Gold Coast, the Slave Coast, Guinea, Mandy, Congo, Angola, get to Charleston, South Carolina, get to Baltimore, and get to Virginia? Do you see how stupid these questions are? Where are the slave ships? How did these people get here if they didn't take ships? Was teleport teleportation a product of the transatlantic slave trade? Did they come from West Africa via a teleporter to Atlantis, which then took them in a Tesla to Charleston, South Carolina? People need to up the level of discourse if we are ever to really change the narrative about us. So it's not primarily this slave stuff. Speeding forward, because we are not the slave channel. I just wanted to set the precedent with this. Rob Owen loves it, and he, I'm sure he's somewhere. Well, when your ass was free, well, what did you call themselves? Did they call themselves Mandy and all that? Well, culturally, these people were having sex with each other. The Mandy did not have sex with the Mandy all the way through to when your black behind got hit. The experience of the enslavement where you had Gold Coast people having babies with Rice Coast people, having babies with Pepper Coast people, having babies with Congos, but they were of the same general areas of West and Central Africa. By virtue of that, because we've clearly seen these people are from different regions of West and Central Africa, when it's time for them to form collective, they can't say, well, I'm Mandy, I'm the son third, because by that time, we're talking a couple hundred years later, everybody into mixing. Huh? So if everybody's into mixing, how do we come together as a collective? What can we come on? Some say it's religion, because now a certain segment of us is Christianized. Well, nah, nigga, ain't all about this. We got enough sense, these are our elders and ancestors, that we are what? That's where this part of pre presentation comes in, folks. Not even presentation, just stuff that we're presenting so people can understand how we got to this point. So now you have African societies forming, and here's a bazillion of those. 
Do you understand how this works? When we are free, which is we, what we primarily talk about, the question always goes, well, what do we call ourselves? And you convolute this question in the conscious community for years because it's a point of just one, grandstanding, and two, not really wanting to accept that we called ourselves African and move on from that. Obviously, it changed. You understand the politics involved and why it evolves, even African-American to this day. But you don't want to deal with the reality of what did them people call themselves when they got a chance to speak for themselves? They called themselves African. Why? Because they are an amalgamation of the Mandy, of the Congo, or the Rice Coast, the Pepper Coast. Do you get the picture? By the second generation, if I ain't had no baby with another Mandy, it's my kid a Mandy, and he wasn't, he or she was not even born in Mandy land. The baby was born in Charleston, South Carolina. <laughs> so when you see the African now with the ability to name himself and name his own organizations, well, what does he call them? Let's just go through the list. Well, we have here 1821, we got, okay. The subscribers being persons of African descent in the town of Brooklyn in Kings County in behalf of themselves, they're starting the library. These are the two words that's killing me, African descent. Those two words, me and Rob Warren, really started pump pushing in their face about two, three years ago, and it hurts because that's what's in the legal documents that they wrote as well as what the government wrote. So when you go to those Cherokee, Chickasaw, Choctaw, Okmulgee, Freedmen treaties, they are disturbed that it says African descent. When you go into the Constitution and the first lines of who Absalom Jones and Richard Allen are talking about, the abos and all these other nuts are disturbed that it says African descent. Our people took into account that we are not just Africans, we are descendants. He's a descendant. They were clear on who we are from the beginning. Nigga, we are descendants because I was born in Philly, Charleston, Virginia, whatever, but I descend, I'm a descendant from Africans. You can't just encapsulate themselves. Why? Because in the slave ports of Charleston, Baltimore, Philly, otherwise, Africans are still coming in. So it's not like that experiment is over and it's just a sentence. No, there are people who were still being snatched from Africa. Okay, I'm not the ones that were snatched two days per se, but I'm a descendant. Because then they say, well, my grandmama was and this and that and that. See how that works? It was accounted for in and by us with African descent. We said that, okay? So when you got African society, constitution, what does it say in that constitution? It says African society in big letters. What do we call ourselves folks? Did we call ourselves Hebrew and all this other stuff? No, we called ourselves African. Did I make that up? No, here is the primary sources once again. We are indebted to a friend for a copy of the Constitution of the African Society. Let's get to it first. We, the African members, these are people born into America, known that they're descendants, but they start their constitution with we, the African members. And yet you have years and years, or well, what did they call themselves? They never called themselves African. They never, you see how stupid this sounds, we are trying to push to get our story in them damn history books, the real story. It is now diluted and perverted by sheer madness and is driven by ego and a lack of knowledge of self. We, the African members. What did they call themselves? They called themselves, do I need to get a skywriter? Did they call themselves all of the wild stuff y'all want to pretend? No, they called themselves African. They named their societies and organizations 
African societies. Are people this slow? This isn't just one, which was started in 1796. 1796. Hmm? This is the Boston African Society. <laughs> okay. How about the New York Union African Society? See, Mr. Stillwell, to incorporate, meaning that it's recognized by the state of New York, the New York Union African Society. What did they legally even put their names out there for their organizations, folks? African. If you've learned at least one new thing thus far, you'd like to support the Cash App is History Man 718. The Cash App is History Man 718. What did they call themselves? Does anybody see how silly these arguments become? Hmm? How about this? Their organizations. Watch y'all. Ogun, Gullah, grab bombs once again. This is 1792. Let's see what this says in the first sentence. Respectfully sure that a number of Africans, that covers the Africans, and the descendants of Africans, that's where the bombs drop profusely. Our people going back to the 1700s accounted for the fact that not all of us were necessarily born in West or Central Africa, but we are descendants. This is the two words that woke people tend to run from because it hurts. It crushes everything you're saying. This is not no white man saying, this is a black people telling you, A, we know who we are, we know who we kin to, and we know what we're going to call ourselves, but even that moves and changes, but you refuse to, lean, to learn the history while we even today are arguing about these names. It was political. That's another organization. That was not the same one. We got Boston, we got Philadelphia, we got an African church, we got an African library. What else we want? That's okay, okay. What else we want? Let's go to the history of the African Society for Mutual Relief. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. 95, they required to the legislature. Da, 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 da. This is Mr. Webster, da, 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 da. it's kind of long. I'm going to go through the whole thing. It's a lot of names. I appreciate that, uh, Sabio. Um, okay. So what we've covered, oh, here's a name you love. Let's see what this says. Hmm? Hmm? See, see why history gets perverted if you don't know the proof? Okay. Let's go says most of the ringleaders were the rulers or the class leaders in what is called the African society and is considered faithful, honest fellows. Indeed, many of the owners would not be convinced till the fellows confessed themselves that they were concerned and the first object of all was to kill their masters. Hey folks, do you know what that African society was? That's the African society that Denmark Vesey was a part of, my friends. Anybody else want to play around with our history? That plot that Denmark Vesey had going, you know, the reason that Dylan Ruff went in there and did what he did to our people in that church? You know, that Denmark Vesey. Do you understand that that was brought about and almost put into a realization by people who were in what was the name of their organization? Most of the ringleaders were the rulers or class leaders in what is called the African society and considered faithful, honest fellows. Oh, those are some Uncle Tom's boule. But 
Indeed, many of the owners would not be convinced. Why not? Till the fellows confessed. Remember, they made them confess themselves that they were concerned. And the first object of all was to what? Kill their masters. But yet you have people disparaging our people for what? This is not me. This is Den Mark Vesey. You see, Gullah Jack. There's your name, Gullah Jack Duval. Gullah Jack performed some ceremony of witchcraft. Of witchcraft. These are African rituals. See how we sneak this into that Gullah Jack performed. There goes Gullah favorite word. My other Gullah in the chat. Do we do so? We pull the buckra to pieces. Gullah Jack Savage wanted to rip the buckra, the white man, to pieces. Plotted in the African society. And you want it down, the African society. It says, more cunning to delude the incredulous African in the plot. Gullah Jack was considered invincible. He could not be hurt nor killed by any means, whatever. But a blow from him would do instant execution. It says religion and superstition were used by the more cunning to delude the incredulous African in the plot. Huh? So do they do African rituals as well? You see it. Once again, folks, this is not me. This is 1822, August 7th, Poughkeepsie Journal talk about the Negro plot at Charleston, which is one involving Gullah Jack and Denmark Vesey, which was planned to organize where? In their African society who is some boule toms so <laughs> unreal uh i mean i can do this all day so what we've covered so far i'm going to give a little recap for people who came in a little bit late what we had oh, man, is i went over in particular, we don't necessarily deal exclusively at this point. I don't even really talk about it. The enslavement of people. But when you want to uh, see some of the things that happen and have the document to not just read through someone's narrative or tell about it, then by that account, you may want to get the documents illustrative of the history of this history of the slave trade. It's a five um, volume set. And right here, if somebody puts it in the, in the chat again, you can read it for free. And you can read the documentation of when they took people from where, whether Guinea, Ghana, Gambia, whatever, the merchants involved and what happened. Have you? Wow. See? Um, Portuguese were not slow to respond to the challenges to the African monopoly offered by the English voyages, angered by Wyndham's Barbary adventures, tells you about the islands, da 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 da. da. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it's expensive. If there's a particular question in the chat, I could try to get to it, but this is it. I'm going to go out the Gambia River, what happened when they build Elmina, you might want to know. Maybe we can go through that. Is that a myth? Yeah, Elmina should be built by, by the soon. So we go to Elmina. What we'll do is we'll go to Elmina. Does anyone realize the Elmina and the New World? Does anybody slow it down? What does Elmina mean? Elmina means the mine. They had our people who were getting resources in Elmina gold extracting stuff. And when they brought them to Brazil in particular, they also worked in the Elmina there because there were mines that they were extracting minerals from in the New World. So we can see the connections once again between West and Central Africa by the fact we have an Elmina in West Africa and one in Brazil and other places. How did they have Elmina one in West Africa? Oh, do we see how silly once again it goes. Well, what is he jaw jacking about? Well, L L Mina. El Mina Castle is where? Is in Ghana. Where is it at? The Gold Coast. We know that there were gold. So here's another thing. How do you explain and say there was no slave trade when they have an El Mina Castle, which is in the Gold Coast, which is said, then we all agree was a slave fort, and you have Gold Coast Africans, who I'm telling you were victim of the slave trade, will end up in South Carolina. I know this because I got runaway ads for one. And I'm asking you an honest question. Are you saying that they swam here? 
So for you to lead off of where are the boats and then telling me that the slave trade didn't happen because you can't find the boats, then when was the great swim the Atlantic Ocean challenge? Conscious people need to stop taking us to some high level stuff and realize how redundantly stupid these questions become year after year. And the younger people are coming to awakenings hearing this nonsense. It can be broken down and explained simply, folks. This is not some, let's have a debate and argue. There's nothing to argue because I won't be arguing with you. I'll be giving you the same documents illustrative of what I'm talking about, whether it is the slave trade or the documents illustrative to where these people called themselves African prince. Uh -oh. Paul has something called uh, the African Lodge. Another organization is besides the African Church, the African Methodist Episcopal, right? So we have churches. I showed you libraries. I showed you African societies, which would benefit and mutual aid societies. Now I'm going to show you civic organizations in forms of Freemasonry, which comes out of friendly societies and such. But we have Prince Hall, right? And so how he comes on the scene, I'm just going to skip to this a little bit. Maybe I'll stay on this for a second. But my main point is he says, one thing more we beg leave to hint, that is that your petitioners have for some time past beheld with grief ships cleared far from this harbor for Africa. This is Prince Hall in 1788, April 11th. And April 11th, petitioning to the people of the Boston Senate, or not Senate, but uh. I forgot the act legislature, I'll just say it at that, to stop the slave trade because his brothers and sisters are being kidnapped. So I'll read this, I'll read just this part. I know it's a little blurry, but here it is. I'll start at the top so you see it's, I can't even highlight the word. One thing more we would beg Lee to hint that is that your petitioners have for some time past beheld with grief, ships cleared far from this harbor, which is Boston Harbor, for Africa. Did the slave trade happen? Well, unless Prince Hall, some may believe, was a part of the great Illuminati conspiracy to, to confuse the people 300 years later, why is Prince Hall in 1788 and April 11 mentioning the fact that Boston is, has ships going to Africa? Oh, he was Boule, and this was a secret plot 300 years ago. So when Negroes read this stuff in, 20, in the 2000s, they'll see that all this was some hoax. It makes zero sense, and it makes you look like a fool. It says, and there they either steal, this is Prince Hall, or cause others to steal. We were the primary document in Elizabeth Donnings about what did John Hawkins do? He stole and he bought from Africans, other Africans, so he caused them to steal. What is Prince Hall noting here in 1788? It says, once again, ships cleared far from this harbor, Boston, for Africa, and there they either steal or cause others to steal. This is the key part. Our Prince Hall is showing connection to those people stolen from Africa by the word our. The next words are brothers and sisters. Prince Hall is noting his connection to those people in Africa, calling him, calling them their brothers and sisters. So when he then turns around and those folks name it the African Lodge, do you see why he would name it African? He saw that he had a connection and then was a descendant of Africa and that our was his brothers and sisters, those being Africans. So to call my organization the African Lodge, and you to say, well, somebody told me to do that. No, they didn't. It's clear right here. He's petitioning for Boston to stop sending ships from Boston to kidnap or steal his brothers and sisters. His, because he said, our. Do you see now how utterly juvenile some of these arguments are? 
These are primary sources. This ain't he reading from some white man book. No, this is the newspaper. Like we all living in April 11, 1788 and pick up the Dunlap and Claypool's American Daily Advisor and read page two. This Negro got in here talking about this. Gullah and Ogun, this is where more drop bombs drop. If they rewind it, they'll see like, damn, this new, yeah, yeah. They want zero smoke, folks. They'd rather talk and talk about out of Africa theories and all this other stuff, which has you no know, has validity. Let me say that, that that conversation has validity. But when you talking about, well, who was them cotton pickers and then people that was getting lynched out there and people still going through persecution, that is kind of putting muddy in the conversation when you got to all go all the way back to Lucy to entertain that question. When we can deal with these primary resources right here that will knock out what Lucy can rest in peace because that's a silly ass question when you got to go. Black folks arguing about out of Africa. If you don't sit your simple ass down somewhere, even the whitest of white people up in the only people who took long to accept it was the China, the Asians and they held out trying to believe in some Peking man. Peking man got smashed. Even they had to say, oh yeah, they got us. Everybody come from there. Ain't nobody arguing about that. They're not arguing about it so much that they say, yeah, they made a company, but we are the evolution of man. And they say that the white man, since he was last, it was the evolution. So even the crazy ass cracker, who you call, don't say that no more. That part was a parthogenesis or whatever the name, that shit lays in the margins way out in Cuckooville. But getting back to having a more direct impact on how we can explain who and what we are in these days and times, we see this documentation to show Gold Coast, Pepper Coast, uh, Slave Coast, they, my God, y'all, do he gotta slow it down again? They called it, watch this y'all, the Slave Coast. Slave Coast, well, where is that? In West Africa, once again, folks, the slave coast. Well, where did they take the slaves? The transatlantic slave trade led to the formation, who told you this word, of an Atlantic community of Africans and Europeans in the 17th, 18th, and 19th. That community was via, was by the slave trade. So we go to where we're, ports that were exported, these slaves, these enslaved people from Africa include, you want names? Weeda, this is where the Negro Jews come here, see, Weeda, what, all this nutty stuff. Lagos, Añejo, Grand Popo, I can't pronounce one, Agui, Jaquin, Porto Novo, Badagri. These ports traded slaves, who were supplied from African community, traded. It was a slave trade. That's the part that's just, just is uncomforting for some people in the audience. It was not strictly a Debo maneuver. Africans were complicit to a degree in the selling of other Africans. Facts, this does not exempt the European from any of his dastardly deeds. It is telling the actual stories. Otherwise, like I posed before, Here's, here's a question. So either you're saying that these dudes showed up in a few ships and our people is extremely soft and let them establish things like slave castles all up and down the West African coast. So our people that soft or were they that scandalous? It's a tough question to answer, but no matter what, I'm always leaning to that scandalous because I don't believe them crazy Africans was that soft, but I know that humans are evil and greedy people and man will sell man. I know that's humanity across the board. So I'm going to say that, and the evidence bears this out. Some people in power in those West African kingdoms were involved in it, and we have documentation. Our people wasn't soft. They didn't, this, this Elmina that you see didn't happen because of softness. It happened because of complicity. And that's what sucks. But if we deal with the truth and manipulation on the part of Europeans, 
European takes the lion's share. See, people hear these words and they think that somehow the European exempt. My words are not exempting the European from his dastardly deeds, nor the Muslim who came across that hot ass desert. What I'm telling you is to some level, complicity happened. This is why you see something called the slave coast. Let's go back. Oh, I gotta type it again. Hold on. And all you guys can do this at home, right? This ain't no smart Negro rhetoric. Well, it is, but you know what I mean, right? And that's what that was talking about. So when you then see things like these poor traded slaves who were supplied from African communities, tribes, and kingdoms, I said people in charge of this, including the Alada and Wida, which were later taken over by the Dahomey kingdom. Modern historians estimate that between two and three million people were transported out of this region called the Slave Coast and traded for goods. Did John Hawkins do that? Yes. Do we have primaries, primaries of that? Yes. It says like alcohol and tobacco. Well, let's stop there. Well, now stop there. From the Americas. It said like alcohol and tobacco from the Americas. So what we do is, hold on. As we go back to our sources again, here's Prince Hall, what he says. It says, is this the one? It says, oh heavens, that this, I wait, this might be the other one. Brothers in fielded ships, halls, happy men and women crowd together and find the best market to sell them with cheap slaughter and then return here like honest men after imported with the lives of liberty fell men at the time to call themselves Christian. Blah, 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 blah. But Prince Hall, uh, talks about those uh, distillers. So I'll go back because do, do, do. Do, do, do. Jane Washington Mass African Large. No. Is this Prince Hall right here? This one? He be jaw jacking, y'all. He, he just take up the paper, the whole thing. He, he, he. Uh, what's the one? Uh, free blacks. Uh, yeah. Oh. No, it's not. That's not it. It's not that one. My point is, I can show it with somebody else. I wanted to just use him since I was talking about him is the the product was this rum y'all so when you see where are we Badagri. no i keep going away when you see uh it's traded for goods like alcohol and tobacco from the americas well we understand that those west west african and when in Jamaican Barbados, it's not just the raw sugar, it's the runoff they made use for. We know they made use for it because we see even the Royal Navy began to use something called grog, and that became the official drink of them. But what they also produced was rum, glasses, and what have you. Now that rum, as you can see today, like I mentioned, is not a, you know, it's not the super drink in England, but that rum was the West Africans into alcoholics. So from the Americas being a part of the triangular trade, you understand where they were going. In fact, this now for my people who may be involved in African spirituality shows you the connection to that alcohol and that tobacco, which are significant influences in some um, diasporic uh, traditions, let's say. So what all that fancy speech is, is when you got uh, Baron Samadhi, for one, and yes. so when the Baron has his, and people can Google Baron, oh, it means just go to, so people can do this. So when Baron Samadhi, Baron Samadhi is usually depicted with a top hat, black tail coat, dark glasses, and cotton plugs in the nostrils, as if to resemble a corpse dressed and prepared for burial in a Haitian style. He's frequently depicted as a skeleton and speaks in a nasal voice. Blah, 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 blah. He is noted for disruption, obscenity, debauchery, and having a particular fondness. So Baron Samadhi, 
has a has a particular fondness for what, folks? For tobacco and rum. So a West uh, a, a diasporic religious tradition under Voodoo, one of their main uh, deities, if you will, or, or, or Loas, excuse me, has a fondness for tobacco and rum, which are products of the transatlantic slave trade. How did these people with these religions have products of the transatlantic slave trade as integral part of their spiritual systems? Mm, mm, mm. Gullah and Ogun, please drop the bomb here. Wherever you go, we got the Baron sitting up here with rum. Did he get the rum and tobacco from the Congo? Huh? How about he went up, let me go up, down, up there to uh, the home and get me, let me go to the Muslims, because Muslims run all through Western Central Africa and go and get some tobacco and rum from the Muslims. No, these are products of the slave trade, the triangular trade that people say did not happen. Then how, here's the other question folks, hope y'all writing these questions down there. How did the Baron end up with the cigar and rum. <laughs> How about Papa Legba? So Papa Legba has what? He usually appears as an old man on a crutch or with a cane wearing a broad brim straw hat and smoking a pipe or drinking what? Here it is. Dark rum. How did a voodoo lower end up once again, another one with rum and tobacco? Ain't no rum in the jungle. And you're arguing, did the transatlantic slave trade happen? Does anybody see how juvenile some of these discussions are? We have now used cultural elements along with primary sources up and down the dial to show this complexity and diversity and all these clues that we can extract of who the people are, the culture and where they came from. But yet you have conscious folks playing this silly game. If you've learned one new thing thus far that you've never heard before, the Cash App is History Man 718. The Cash App, Cash App is History Man 718. And I appreciate that. So now we go to this sentence and said, in Haiti, he is the greatest elocutioner. Legbo facilities, communication, speech, and understanding. He is commonly associated with dogs. Papa Legba is invoked at the beginning of every ceremony. Papa Legba has his origins in historic West African kingdom of Dahomey. We saw that Dahomey was a slave trading place. So we see slaves in Dahomey. So how did Papa Legba get to the Americas? Papa Legba, they'll tell you, I guess, swam with the people who swam from West Africa. They have Papa Legba on his back and they use a spider web spun by a Nazi so they did not get wet. We have figured it out. We have figured it out. When the people decided to have the great Atlantic swimming contest, before they left, they packed Papa Legba, his rum and tobacco on their backs, and of course some drums, no niggas love some drums, and had a Nazi spin a spider web that was the length of the Atlantic Ocean, and this is how they got across. The Cash App is History Man 718. I appreciate that. No diplomacy. It's History Man 718. Captain Diaspora, do you hear me? 
Was it one of them extra strength Spider-Man webs where the people say, yo, go get leg bar in them before we go pick some cotton, y'all, and bring him over here with us? John the Conqueror. John the Conqueror, also known as this was our, our, this was Dr. Clark gave me this one, y'all. I love this is my Dr. Clark is like God for me. So I don't even care what none of y'all say. There's certain people that's in the pantheon and greatness. And Dr. Clark, along with Schomburg and Jay Rogers, are just a few of them, and uh, Bruce and, and Willis Huggins among others, but those right there, so y'all can say what y'all want, but Dr. Clark is Jesus to me, because he drops jewels like this that I don't forget 30 some odd years later, he started, oh, what the hell is a John the Conqueror? Well, John the Conqueror, Jack and many other folk variants with dealing with culture. Now, another source we can use is a folk hero from African-American folklore. He is associated with the roots, or he put in roots on them. Hmm? Roots and reggae, you hear roots a lot with us, don't you? Well, those roots were actual roots because farmer was also doctor, was also spiritual leader. Uh-oh, hold on, slow down. John the Conqueror with magical powers in American folklore, especially among the hoodoo tradition of folk magic. Mm, mm, mm. Sometimes John is an African prince, the son of a king of Congo. How did the folk tale about the son of the king of Congo end up in a rice field in Charleston? How in the hell did Zora Neil Hurston, where is Netta and Ogun TK, did Zora Neil Hurston wrote of the adventures of John the Conqueror in that folklore tradition, but they tell you that John is an African prince. How did during the Great Atlantic Aquatic Swimming Race by the West Africans, did they possibly bring Papa Doc, Papa Doc, Papa Legba, Baron Samadhi, John the Conqueror, while balancing on an Anansi spider web all across the Atlantic Ocean just to pick sugar cane and cotton? Why did these people do it? Huh? And why in the hell can't we swim at all if our ancestors obviously swam across the Atlantic Ocean? Huh? Oh, Lord Jesus. Where do we go? Well, let's just have some fun in there. Well, I got a few more minutes left, y'all. Let's go back. Let's see. Can we find? No, I'm sure I got to have one John the Conqueror. Mm -hmm. Prophet John the Conqueror. Oh, okay. Let's have a little fun, y'all. Y'all ready? You know we. You know I like to have fun. John the Conqueror, that name is so infamous that when we got our scam guards era, y'all, do you know that in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, there was actually a what? Scams the name Prophet John the Conqueror. Scam Guard Committee Court is in session. John the Conqueror in 1960 was a root man. You know what the root when you got to get down to the root. And so how this is tied into y'all gonna get this now tied into the numbers game is all those mystics and who do all stuff got tied into the numbers game, which had to deal with what? that luck part of the luck and looks that we prayed for during the great migration. John the Conqueror was who you got some numbers from when you wanted to play the lotto. John the Conqueror, the original root man, gave you the numbers. <laughs> This, folks, is from the Pittsburgh Courier, a black newspaper, March 4th. Is today March 4th? That would be funny. 1961. 
Hmm? Scam guards in the building. Here we go again. Attention. Money, money, money. Who said that? Ain't that the Chambers brothers? We're going to read this together. Money, money, money. To all out-of-town clients, I'm open all day Sunday. See me on Sunday. Order your Cadillac on Monday. I'm not making it up. You read this for yourself. See me on Sunday. Order your Cadillac Monday. He was in the Pittsburgh area. For sure, hit success. Telegram phone. Do not write positively. No letter sent to release. Received. Be a sure one of the day. Uh oh. Brooklyn stand up. Prophet John will be in his Brooklyn office. Did not tell you about Brooklyn that magic. For the record, I am the one who created the phrase Brooklyn magic and applied it to polite. I am no one else but me. Garfield and Rob Bourne were there when I did it. Besides that, though, here's an example of Brooklyn Magic Scam Guard Edition. Prophet John the Conqueror's office was where? Brooklyn, New York. Lord have mercy. <laughs> hmm? Now we got the original root man who's manipulated because historically we have a connection to John the Conqueror, who in our folklore, was good luck and an African prince, the son of a king of Congo. Hmm? <laughs> this is why I stay inside. I try not to come out. I leave conscious folks to talk what they talk about. Because once again, it's not y'all listening to me, just jaw jack. We're running through actual sources that you can attain for yourself, yes? Please put a one in the chat if that much is the truth. Is this me telling you, hey, I got some secrets? Well, besides the news clippings, where if you subscribe, you can get to. But other than that, I'm sharing this and showing you where I am getting the sources from, folks. That's the difference between us and them. I don't need to swim to you like, hey, if you support and this is cool, yes, the Cash App is History Man 718. But you ain't got to do that to get this for free. And you can test it and verify it for yourself. So if you want to debate me, I'm going to go right to the same thing because it is indisputable. This is why it has not been disputed yet. And this is why cats want to talk all around me because they're scared to talk to me. This is why the internet gets pulled by them. Somebody call Hadas. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's go back to some. See what else we can extract. Yes, fifteen thousand five hundred eighty-nine clippings. Ain't nobody just searching nothing randomly. See what's randomly. I should say this says my clippings. So don't say he's just searching for the internet, searching for things. No. These are all things that I have clipped already through 10 years. So that may hurt, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Prophet John the Conqueror. We want some more? Y'all like the prophets? Can we have some fun now for like the last 20 minutes or whatever? Can we get this little scam guys stuff in here? Okay. I hope so. I hope the answer was yes. Did I put them all on the scam guards? I probably did scam. Nah, I only put a few on the scam guards, but I got a ton of them. How about Brother D? Y'all want some more? I told y'all, uh, maybe I'll finally do the one and show you. I did the, so people who are new here, I did a presentation called Black No More. And what I did and said, there was migration mutation culture. And basically what that is, is just my analysis of what this transformation was of our people through the great migration. We depended on two things where we hope we had success during this period. One was looks, and this is why you see us mutating into these new beings, whether hair con compressing, skin light, and changing identities, origins, and what have you. But the other main part that we depended on and hoped for, and you can see this today, as soon as any one of y'all go down to the strip mall, to the store, or to the bodega if you're in the cities, and that is the luck. And this idea that to get out of our oppressed situation, we're going to either need to change these looks and start looking like them and the luck on our side. This is an obsession with the numbers game. 
And then they did some evil stuff through all of this and mixed it with the policy game and started mixing who do and with it. So the numbers, which we have an affinity for, became a spiritual thing for us. So whether this is why grandma hands start itching and she tell you to go play 716 to this day. It is ingrained and cultural for us. Those elements are there from West African traditions or whatever, but they got perverted through the years or whatever. Right. And so that's that's the short way that I can put it. So what you do is, and if you just come to Wikipedia again, I'll show you. If you go to policy game, policy numbers, it's called numbers game, right? And what you're gonna see in the numbers game is they don't have it here. So well, okay, what I'll do, you can go to Aunt Sally's policy book. You see number, you see policy means numbers, right? So what you'll understand is then Aunt Sally, this was the major book that people would go big red for people who are in New York and the metropolitan area. But this was the, the, the book that they would go and get to uh, get their numbers from. Now, 40, no, let me give you a go slow. Now, people can see that she's holding up four, here's another great example, 411.44, okay? I'm gonna show you the significance. We're gonna decode some stuff. So what they do is they use us, here's this tradition, right? Of this Sia, of this clairvoyant, of mama who goes about the roots and all that other stuff, right? So now she's also, you know, giving you this insight into numbers because allegedly she can see the future. This is how policy becomes traditional. There were white women who made industries out of going to visit that quote unquote mammy because she would do two, a couple of things. One, read the tea leaves. I'll show you a ton of pictures on that. And the other one was things like this, give them numbers and also tell them if their white husbands was cheating them on or not. So this 41144 was the number that they say that we played. It was called the washerwoman's gig. 41144 is called the washerwoman's gig because that was the number that allegedly the washerwoman all went and go and played. If you hit 41144, that would be like hitting the number. Is he just George Jackson? 41144. So when you can do this as well, you go to 411.44. Hey, looky here. Here's Aunt Sally in that policy book. You would say is a phrase that has been used repeatedly in popular music and as a reference to numbers allegedly chosen by poor African-Americans for the purpose of gambling on lotteries. The perversion of our West African cultures and, and the just metamorphosis in these weird ways where it becomes cultural and unidentifiable from its West African roots, but it's still in it when you seeing that those people on that number line and grandma's hand itching from the number. Those are remnants of these things. Hmm? So once again, we got some hoodoo elements. How did the hoodoo elements get across the water? A lot of questions. He said, I need answers, Sway. Getting back to, I'm going to get a good one. I got a whole one. Let me just take profits. We can just get to the scam dogs. I probably got them under profits. Profit. Here we go. Profit Costoni. Uh, Prophet John, here goes Prophet Jones, his Prophet, yeah, I can't see that, that's not a good picture, this is Prophet Jones, so he's a uh, Midwest type of dude, here's Prophet Jones right here, y'all, you see, it says, swathed in his gorgeous robe, Detroit's Prophet Jones steps down from his day days to present Miss Ophelia Kemp a $100 check as his contrib contributions to the Crippled Children and Cancer Fund. Prophet Jones, right? So what we do, folks, is we go and well, hey, profit. Watch this. This is the scam guard part of the show. Profit Jones, and what you're gonna see, folks, is well, goddamn, scam guards even have Wikipedia pages. Isn't this fun? This is all primary research that you can do. Don't let these people fool you, James. Francis Marion Jones 
also known as Right Reverend Dr. James F. Jones, D.D., and as Prophet Jones was an American Black religious leader, televangelist, faith healer. Let me get back to that tea leaf part. Please, I got books I don't want to pull out. Read tea leaves. Images. I'm not going to go to my Pinterest right now, but just remind me another day. If you don't believe me that the Mammies was doing the tea leaves for the people, I'll show you some whole history of them doing it. And I just don't feel like pulling up pictures. Um, so why don't I just go ahead and move on? Because we talked about, okay. Anyway, Prophet Jones, faith healer. Church of the Universal Triumph, Dominion of God Incorporated, y'all. You know we got some hella plot names. The Church of the Universal Triumph, Dominion of God. That's Prophet Jones. Uh, we got some ill pictures. Now we can go to them and you can see. Look, y'all. Oh, it gets good if you follow along. Uh huh. You think I'm just playing around? Look at your man, Prophet Jones. Prophet Jones sitting up here in the, who's the boy that's on the cover of the, it was in Essence now that they mad at? Look at Prophet Jones in the Cameron Pink edition with rings on every finger, y'all. Everyone. Huh? Huh? Everyone. Wow. Yeah, that, that commercial break was for you to sit and study the Cameron before Cameron. And you look what his feature sermon is, y'all. Can y'all see that? God don't like women. <laughs> Yo. Your man featured presentation was God don't like women. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you see it, Wolf, as strong as turpentine. Look at him. So, and we go through this a lot. So where would this come from? I know I'm diverting a little bit. We got all of the history stuff, but I want to show you where this comes out of. This is what you can Google as well. We're on a great migration. One of the big things that happened was we were not, we were locked out of so many professions that preaching became the hustle. And so you see a proliferation and development of the storefront church as a way for uncle and them to get money when they came up top. Now, the issue was this, is you're running into the AME and many of our older uh, church organizations became out of touch and couldn't handle the number of black folks moving during this great migration. And they became a bit of leaders. This is a historical fact. They began to close the doors even more and more to all these Bamas or whatever coming up to the cities in their view now, because they were supposed to be city fire folk or whatever, that they began closing their, their doors and insulating themselves. So out of this, a void was filled by, by filled where they're saying, well, you know what? I can become a religious leader by, by way of vision. This happens in great numbers. Let me just slow down a little bit because of something called the holiness movement that we really hold on to. Aunt Esther, for all those of a certain age, was a part of the holiness movement and holy rollers. Before we I'll make it more fun, before we get to the holiness movement, we'll just type holy rollers so people can see what I'm talking about. A holy roller has a Wikipedia page. Who are holy rollers? Holy rollers or holy jumpers are terms originating in the 19th century and used to refer to some Protestant Christian churchgoers in the Wesleyan, Wesleyan holiness movement, such as free Methodists and Wesleyan Methodists. So when they broke away from the traditional, as far as we're concerned, African Methodism, this is what extended out of that. 
they began to have visions as way as inspiration. And they didn't have to go to the theological schools that were mandated if you wanted to be a reverend and say the AME or the AME Zion churches. So they took the good old theological learning out of it. And all you needed to do now was have a vision in order to lead your flock. And so this is what happens during this migration to the cities where we are locked out of so many trades that this, now let's back up, storefront church movement starts to come around as a way of Negroes getting money. So let's read now. Often the interior of a building of this kind was converted to an ecclesiastical use simply by putting in chairs, pews, and a makeshift pulpit. How many times have we seen that in our storefront churches? The storefront church sometimes serves as both social and religious hub for many poor African-American Christians to see religious and social leadership in an all-Black urban area. Many storefronts emerged in the urban centers of the northern United States and were filled with poor slaves, leaving the harsh memories of their friends. Understand? And so what can't what happened? Yes, sweet daddy grace is one of them. But what the reason that sweet daddy grace and father divine and all those people can come up is because the traditional, as far as black America is concerned, AME and AME Zion churches began to close their doors because they couldn't handle the amount of need and the, the leadism began to step to, to steep in heavy, but they couldn't handle the amount of need that was coming from so many people from down south who depended on the church's resources for survival. Now, everybody coming to the hood for the free meals, everybody needed food dollars or whatever, and no one's putting into the pot. So these traditional churches became more and more the leaders. I'm throwing it out this so people can understand that the Abyssinia, the high-end Baptist churches in the north and the south, those AME, AME Zion uh, spinoffs and what have you, and close their doors. And then you compound that with the fact, in order for you to be a reverend or a preacher in those traditions, you had to go to a theological school. This was the importance of places like Howard Seminary School and a couple of the other Black college seminary school. As a matter of fact, the two main jobs that Black people got going back to the 1800s were teachers and preachers. That's a fact. Those were the high end, oh, you really made it jobs. Oh, you're a teacher or a preacher. So now when you get to this great migration and you see this happening and all these churches becoming quote unquote bougie and closing the doors, what emerges is storefront churches. So now Unc, who only read a Bible twice, done had a vision, and all of a sudden he got what? He got saved, y'all, and opened up a church and he was a bishop out of nowhere. Anybody following? Right? This is how you have mother doing this and whatever and all this other stuff. And that holiness movement now we can get back to some sources again, because I got those two. That holiness movement, where we at? Where we at? Grown ass man, where we at? That holiness movement. Present to this. So we got holiness, holiness. Come on, Prophet General, I want the good to so, so now we're going to go uh, spiritualist. Spiritualist movement. Morpheus, this is where it gets crazy. So the numbers that I talk about and it's holiness, I done had a vision, my hand itching, hoodoo mishmash matches up, comes in the form of something called the holy, the spiritualist movement. And so before I go there, let's go to show you that that was a knockoff of the spiritualist movement. You guys can do this at home too. Spiritualism. You can guys can read this. Obviously, in spirit rap, and when this is the first sisters who had this thing, you can see the black woman, black people there when they're doing all this Ouija board stuff. But I'll let you have fun with that because I want to get back to the main gist. So, but you can see that this was some phenomenon brought from the spirit world by white folks, right? And then black folks took a hold of this. So, even your mediumship and your all this stuff is influenced by these white folks. Somebody say, Amen. So this is where the seances and I had a vision part steeps into our faith systems and you have holiness and spiritualist movement. As a matter of fact, now what I want to do is show you that there is, what does this say, folks? A national, because this is 1926, a national colored 
spiritualist convention. See how I put the pieces together? Now you have black folks who have national organizations where they're involved in spiritualism, which was all this holiness, hokey pokey, I done had a vision, my hand is itching, um, I'm the chosen one. Yes, primaries, not making it up, convention, national colored spiritualist convention. Let's read about some spiritualists. Why, what happened, y'all? Well, the spiritualists banned the Negroes, and this is why they formed their own black one. Here it is. Did he make it up? I appreciate that. Oh, wow, Courtney, I really appreciate that. 100%. Thank you. The Cash App is History Man 718 for all those who want to, but Cash App, uh, I see you, uh, and all those who did donate. Courtney, 100%. Courtney07, extra, extra special shout out. Courtney07, I really appreciate your support today. Thank you. Ban on Negroes in spiritualist unity. So what happened? Why did I show you color spiritualists? Spiritualists first, right? White folks. Then I showed you color spiritualists. But now I'm showing you how you get to the color spiritualists. Because the white folks, Jim Crow them, so now the black folks are free to have leading so their own organizations and have their own visions dealing with the black visions of spiritualism. Anybody seeing this? Going too fast? The General Assembly of Spiritualists of New York State has withdrawn from the National Spiritualist Association organization, which has been a member since 1914. The step has been taken because of the action of the national body in barring colored people from membership and a doctrinal difference. In secret session held in the hotel, Statler, this city limited to blah, 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 to the Associated Negro Press representative stated, we cannot with clear conscience disenfranchise some of our members in that way. We want to feel that spiritualism is for all people as no part of race prejudice, yada, yada, yada. They was not letting these spiritualist visions come into play. Now. Many of you will get it in the form of the scam gods. So now, when you have people like, okay, let's go to Daddy Grace. Y'all can do this part. Daddy Grace, better known as Charles Manuel Sweet Daddy Grace, was the founding first bishop. Did I say bishop? First bishop. Did he have to go to school and somebody made him a bishop? No. He made himself a bishop. See how I'm putting the pieces together, how we are putting the pieces together? Hmm? Of the predominantly African-American denomination, the United House of Prayer for All People. Let's go here. Apostolic is another key word you want to look for when you're dealing with this. I just had a vision. I'm a bishop. Storefront church people. Huh? The doctrine. Let's get back to the. He was born in Cape Verde. Daddy Grace Graces knew him. The first house of prayer in Massachusetts at the cost of $39. He later became branches and blah, blah, blah. Throughout the 90s and 30s, this is the Great Migration, Grace traveled America preaching and establishing the United House of Prayer for All People. Constitution and bylaws stated that the purpose of the organization was to erect and maintain places of worship and assembly where all people may gather prayer and to worship Almighty God, irrespective of denomination of creed. Right? One of the principles, scam guards, listen close, that Grace taught which provoked controversy was the concept of one man leadership. Hmm? <laughs> H and I C in the building. So when you see these scam gods proliferating, we understand that it comes out of these movements of spiritualism and holiness movements that gross this. Then you have rebellious Pentecostals and their spinoffs, right? But colored spiritualist church, church Harlem. What I want to show you is you can do this as well. Damn church. All right. It's called, y'all, Universal. Watch this. Some of y'all Israelites might like this. Universal, I mean, Muslim. Universal Hagar Spiritual Church. 
Everybody can do this at home. She have a Wikipedia, right? No? We got to write them in Wikipedia. Universal Hagar Spiritualist Church. Let's get, oh. Mm, this ain't the main branch, though. Oh, Lord. Who's their leader? Notice how, now you see where all the profit comes from. Profit means I ain't got to go to nobody's school. Negro, I had a vision. Well, we have the welcome to the Universal Hagar Spiritual Church Association website. And you can see right here that this still exists today. Hmm? Hmm? Some of your grandmoms was up in spiritualist churches. Hmm? There you go. Willie Hurley. He was the third child born to Mr. Willie and Tina Hurley. At the age of seven, little George's ministerial work began. Ain't they always preaching early? He'd often go into the woods and preach to the trees because he loved nature. At the age of 13, he received the gift of prophecy. Did I not tell you all you needed to do was have a vision? This is what they needed. This is why the scam gods was able to grow because they didn't need to answer to the authorities of the AME deal or Howard Seminary or Fist Cemetery or whoever else or seminary. No. Like I had a vision, a prophecy came to me, give me your money. This is what's going on during the Great Migration, folks. This is how parts of our West African spiritual systems through the centuries, Papa Legba and all of this mishmash, diasporic stuff comes out on the tail end and we get huckster charlatans or whatever. And we're so close, we're so far at this point even from figuring out what the truth is that we fall for a hook, line and sinker. To the fact that this day, that grandma telling you her hand itching and go play 716. You see, and then you get people like Smoke Signal and all these weird, what manner of buffoonery is going on in here and all this other weird stuff. Well, I think we'll, if one thing I hopefully we prove that if you don't up the level of discourse, like you just aren't worth the time. And, and what I mean by that, if it was like we're talking about particular, particular topics and you can join in or maybe rewind a video when it came to showing documentation of whether enslavement or the process of what free people began to build and what they call themselves and identify to try to quash any of the crazy stuff, then there's crickets. Then it's all hyperbole and what about this and what happened with this? And here's another thing that, before I get off here, here it is. And then the other part of, well, they, once you say, once they admit that, okay, well, slavery happened, but not like they say it happened. I need everybody to listen to slow it down. Who is they? You ever wonder that? Well, who is they? And then there's crickets. And then you ask the most important question, well, what did they teach us? And so now we are led to believe that all of us, everybody paid attention and was all laser beamed in during history class when the reality is your ass was either absent or asleep for most of it, but you're going to tell me what they taught us wasn't exactly how it was. And then I ask you, well, what did they teach us? And people begin to trip and mumble and bumble, and it sounds, once again, juvenile and ridiculous. Hmm? And then I say, okay, let's try, let's try to meet on a level where we can have some discourse and build. Well, yeah, check this out. They did, they being authors of history books, let's get clear, that are taught in schools, leave out portions of our story, fact. But if you cannot point to the fact that, hey, I just sat through a revolutionary war and you're talking about George Washington and the British and all that. And I ain't heard one black person 
you can now say, hey, there was a distortion here because we got black troops on both sides. We got a damn Sierra Leone, an African country coming out of the remnants of the Revolutionary War in America. We got Haitian troops fighting in the Revolutionary War, black Haitian troops fighting in the Revolutionary War, as you can mention. We got the black, black Paul Revere. You got all these other characters, not characters, but people that you can put in this. Why are all of those people missing from this same Revolutionary War story that you're telling me? That's the fight. That's the fight. It's not no 1619 project. This is all I am asking is just tell the story you don't need to wait till february you are now in what is it the kids go back to school in october and you start in september or whatever and you're starting off with the revolutionary war mention these people so then the babies can see it's not a denial of slavery yes there was enslavement but our people were more than slaves we are integral parts of any historical story regarding the america definitely that's indisputable but when you got people flanking you on the other side now coming and tell you, well, that didn't happen like they said, and it was Illuminati, and it was Atlantis, and they was this, and they was Boule, and this, this, and the Indian, and they misclassified, and the doors roll, and the one drop, and the this, and the that, and they just muddy all this stuff, and they moved the goalposts. Every time it's convenient, or we was the Levite tribe, and the Mormons is black, and black Europeans, all this other muddled garbage, garbage. This does a disservice to the real truth of who we are, our successes and failures being documented in history. Yeah, we took some L's in there, but we're sitting in 2023, a people, this is a story of a people who are still here to tell the story. Where are the Omex? Where are the people that you say that you are? They don't exist. Where the Incas at? Where the Aztecs at? Where the Mayans at? They gone. We were here. We have documentation. When they came over and was talking to the Aztecs and was talking to the Mayans and was talking to the Incas. And we are still here in 2023. So where are the Mayans and where are the Aztecs and where are the Incas? And it's not to disparage those cultures at all. But my point is, we have successes and failures, but we are still here to tell a story. So we are still winning. We are not a footnote. That's the win. If they could have destroyed and stomped us all out, that when they were done with us, they would have tried to put us on boats and to get at everything. Hang on some tree. No. So the they has to stop. They have not, they being these, the, the internet people have moved it from okay, the slave trade happened, but not like they said to this new soft gray area that they like to play in, not like they said it happened. And you ask them, well, who is they? And then you just hear the fuck creep start out of their mouth. It's JV at this point, y'all. We gotta realize woke people, conscious, whatever y'all call yourself, have to realize that it looks crazy. When you then don't back it up with any sources. And then the sources that the, the, the people bring out, oh, that was Boule, it was misinterpreted, it was just, it was that, it was Atlantis, it was Adam Weishaupt, it was. But yet I, I look on Brother Garfield's channel yesterday and see a poor brother go and pull out his whole family line and lineage and what have you just to tout the fact that he came and the farthest he can go back is to an Irishman. And somehow we need to look and celebrate the Irish. That saying that we have some remnants of hating ourselves still in there. And this is no knock on the brother at all, but this is, he was like going back to this Irish part and he was happy that that story on that timeline started with some Irishman. If that's the case, and that's what we're going to do, we're going to now point back to the Europeans and say, okay, we can justify it by saying it was Black somehow, then we have really lost. 
I'd rather say I'm a European and I know it's white than say that I'm of West or Central African descent is what they're yelling. That needs to be heard because that is reverberating and it's just showing that the white man doesn't have to do any work. You have taken on the banner of hating yourself. So once again, just one of the sources that I recommend, somebody put this link in the chat again for those who may have come late. If you want to understand and get a hold of documents regarding the slave trade and, and the, the uh, transcriptions of them, right? The, the, the resource, one of the resources is documents illustrative of the history of the slave trade. The other one I would suggest once you, you know, you want something in like in a more narrative form is to get The Slave Trade by Hugh Thomas. I can show y'all something. I'm gonna let y'all take a peek at the archives since I'm sitting here. But here's the other book. I recommend also the, the, the Documents Relative is free. You can find it online. And The Slave Trade by Hugh Thomas, you can find on Amazon. And it says, as you see the years from 1440 to 1870, between the two, you will have hundreds and hundreds of sources to go and re research if that is what you choose to do. Hold on one second. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, so with that said, we have that. And um, I think those are two sources and uh, people can pull from that would maybe up the level of discourse regarding this particular period in our history. Okay, so these are all the sources, not all the sources, but these are between the two, you have enough to start a discourse about, well, what happened in Africa and blah, 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 blah. And here's another thing that I want to get across one more before we leave. To then go and have somebody ask you, well, what are you? I appreciate it, Mr. Morpheus. Hear this last part from me. So they go, well, what are you? Where are you from? That question was answered once again early on that that, that, that question is so diluted and silly that they just went with African. Well, why such? Well, if I am a, uh, okay, let's take the examples that we saw. If I'm from the Gold Coast, and it's clear that either y'all saying I swam over here and the likelihood more reality is I came over and enslaved on the ship, but I'm gonna go, I'm in the Gold Coast, from the Gold Coast and I end up in Charleston. And I now, because nature's gonna do what it's do now, have a baby, but I end up having a baby with a woman who is a Mandy. I may be of a con, but I have a baby with a woman who is a Mandy. Now here's the kicker. That baby is born in now Charleston, South Carolina. Well, what is that baby? Is that baby a Mandy or is that baby a Gold Coast or a con like me? Now that's the first generation. Now that child who has an a con father and a uh, what did I say? Just pick a Gambian mother, or Mandy mother who was born in South Carolina clearly has African parents, African descent. But now that child whose parents are from Africa has a child with a woman whose parents are from Dahomey and Congo. A what is her? What is she? And now the ones who have that background, they have children. Now we're only on a second generation of how this happened, y'all. What I'm gonna get across, there were no, there was no play, it was very rare. Maybe in some island villages or whatever where the population is really, really homogenous. But other than that, Mandy's did not have sex with Mandy's for centuries in America. Gola did not have sex with just Gola for centuries in America. Congolese did not have just sex with Congolese 
for this period. After the first dude off the ship laid some pipe, the likelihood is it was not person of his nation. You have a better chance, maybe if you're in the Caribbean, just because of the dynamics of how that works. But even that will get convoluted because along with the Akan in Jamaica, for instance, you got the Igbo, you got uh, all these other people. So that's, you know, culturally one may become more dominant, but that does not mean that all the people are Akan necessarily, right? It's just that the culturalness of the Akan was more of a force than the Igbo. But anyway, in our example, we are at the first generation and we see we have this question, well, what is that kid? And so that go, that's in the 1400s. So by the time Richard Allen or whoever else comes around in the 17s, that is now three centuries, y'all. Is anybody following yet? Three centuries of a mixing of various Western Central African nations. For you now, three centuries on top of that, to ask someone, well, what are you, is utterly ridiculous. Okay? What DNA, de DNA tests do give you percentages of the amalgamation of those Western Central African peoples to say, okay, well, you might have more Mandy than you do uh, Congolese or whatever. But it's clearly showing you that there is a mixture of Western Central Africans in your DNA. So for you to go, I mean, it's cute for you to go, well, Nigerian is 68%, so I'm saying, I mean, I get that. But you got to see it right in front of your eyes. Well, I'm an amalgamation of these places in West Africa. So when they came around and they said, well, God damn it, I wasn't born in Africa. Remember what I said? I was born in Charleston. I can handle that, here go the two words, y'all, by saying I am an African descendant. Before I go, here's the little icing on the cake. Not only did we do it, Cherokee Treaty 1860, what is it, 1866? This is what hurts them even more. Now, nobody read this and brought it up until I said it, what was it, probably two summer years ago. Now, everybody's seen this in documents. He was a damn liar, all of y'all, punk faking. You watch y'all stuff, and then you take it and run, and then you try to pervert it somehow. I see you. And what I mean by that is this. None of y'all was talking about these treaties and the word African being in, in it until I showed you. And now you have to think two years to make an excuse. So what do I mean by that on the way out? Indian Affairs, this ain't the one on one. Okay, is this 1866? Blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to all of them from 1866. No, it's not going to work that way. I'm sure there's a version online. Boom. Okay. Article four, it starts. No, we want article one. Where's one? Give me one because they're going to say I'm cheating. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, no, sir. No, sir. Before I get out of here, mm -mm. they're going to say, see, he's lying. No, treaty. Let me just get a copy so we can read together. Okay. Mm. Hmm. Why did they pull my thing up like this? Ah, oh, boy. Did you do, did you do, did you do. They're all basically the same damn treaty. I just gotta show y'all Chickasaw Treaty eighteen sixty six. Okay, just give me the whole thing so I get the hell up out of here. Oh, Lord. Treaty, give it to me. No? Mm, treaty with the Charlton, Chickasaw. Where's Rob on? Where's that website? Anyway, I'll just read. This is the, chick this is the one, 1866. Treaty with the Choctaw and Chickasaw. So we'll take care of two right here. Everybody can see this? 
Y'all can Google Choctaw Treaty 1866, Chickasaw. I think the Cherokees was 1867 or whatever, or 66, whatever. Here we go. This was the point, though, African descent. Article 3, it says, rules and regulations as... Come on, highlight. You don't want to highlight? Well, anyway, you got to read Article 3. I thought I could highlight it. It says, the Choctaws and Chickasaws are consideration of the sum of $300,000 hereby cede to the United States the territory west of 98 degree west longitude, known as the least district, provided that the said sum shall be invested and held by the United States at an interest not less than 5%. In trust for the said nations and to the said nations and to the legislature of the Choctaw and Chickasaw nations respectively shall have made such laws, rules, and regulations as may be necessary to give all persons of African descent. And what I did now, and I wanted to, I wish I could highlight it really, but you see, I'm going to make it bigger. This is in those freedmen and those treaties that they made with the Native Americans, folks. These two words are the death blow to these people. These two words are the same words that we saw earlier on. And what did the Black people say they were? African descendants. We saw that in their societies that they named African societies. So they are clearly aware that they are of African descent. And what this is showing you as the people who were enslaved by the Chickasaw, Cherokee, Akmogi, and the many others were of African descent. Thus, there was a relationship with those people, but as being enslaved, Muskogee and otherwise, in many, many instances, folks. They were people of African descent. How do we know this? It's in the treaties that the Choctaw, Cherokee, Chickasaw, Okmulgee, Muskogee, and others signed. Listen to the kicker, y'all. After, after the white folks already freed you, the Indians did not free you and did not want to free you until after the white folks already freed you from the plantation. The Indians held out for another year or two. Think about that. Those people that you're claiming did not want to free you at all. The U.S. government had to force them to free you. This is why you have treaties with them. 1866 wins the Civil War. Get it? It's in the documentation who the people are. They are of African descent. The same verbiage that they were using for 17, 17 or whatever, 16, whatever, because they're not necessarily born in Africa. They're born in Indian territory, many of them, their parents were enslaved by Cherokee and Chickasaw, and they were had parents who were there enslaved, and they were born in Indian territory. That makes them of African descent. Now, if one of those parents was a Cherokee or Chickasaw or Mogi, well, they would be free in either way. But yeah, they could have that where they could be both. No one around these parts is saying that those people couldn't be but both. Once again, it's people making silly ass arguments because they have a lack of information and they have an agenda and they refuse to do the homework. Hmm? Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Please, Kuzo. Any questions? Mm -hmm. So, with that said, folks, if you feel that you've learned at least one new thing, I ask you to like the video. One thing I, off the top, there were sources that were given. Please rewind them and go and get them. Please. So we can up the level of conversation. Those are primary sources. Don't let these people to, oh no, white men. These are all we see primary sources around here. But with that said, if you feel that during this presentation you've learned one new thing at least, I ask you to like the video, 
I ask you to share with others and hopefully start some conversation around these things to leave a comment as well as if you want to support the cash app is history man 718. Hmm? I ask y'all to do that at least and take the sources, documents illustrated of the slave trade. See for yourself. This is not to try to pull you to one side or this all of these or the same. Here it is. Here are the documents. Here's some of the documents. Begin to build. So the questions of where the ships, once again, remember, if they ask you where the ships, ask them, are you saying that it was a great swimming race from West Africa to the plantations of Charleston, Virginia, or whoever, Alabama? Because we clearly saw, and, and I can give them to you anytime, that those Mandy, uh, uh, Guinea, Gold Coast, Pepper Coast, Slave Coast, Rice Coast was right in Charleston and Virginia and New York, Boston, Mississippi, Kentucky. How did they get there? Was it a Michael Phelps of Africa swim meet? Yes? Let's slow down the conversation. Yeah, we have to up the level of conversation and stop entertaining stupidity because i'll say this on the way out there are valid questions that need to be answered and research yeah all, all everything has not been answered by any means but some things are just trivial at best like you guys were the same guys who said the slave trade didn't happen and harriet tubman wasn't real and that turner wasn't real and now you're looking to have to walk it back because every time you do that you get blown up by yours truly and rob Warren and Seneb and others too but you get blown up so now you say okay well it didn't happen like the way it happened the same thing that dummy's doing with the um with the harriet tubman story now oh it didn't happen like the way they told us that harriet tubman happened but negro harriet tubman lived for 90 goddamn god bless her years 90. everybody in mama knew her she wasn't real it didn't happen like to say they had if they wrote they, if they wrote about her and it didn't harriet you see what they said about you in the paper harriet tubman lived for nine decades please slow down the conversation Hmm. That's all I ask. And then on top of that, remember, at the end of the day, some of y'all was around last night, gonna see any other guy who ain't mentioned, have every excuse in the world why you don't want to deal with it on the spot. I don't want to debate you. We could set something up. What is there to set up? Once again, folks, none of this was, this is all off the head. Once again, I just want to talk about this particular, particular subject. If you got it, you got it, nigga. And the way y'all talking is acting like y'all got it. It shouldn't be no need to set it up. Nigga, on the spot. How the youngsters say, why isn't it on site? But it seems whenever I come around, people got all excuses in the world. Oh, we could set something up. And what about this? And what about that, nigga? On the spot, headshot, headshot, headshot. Otherwise, go play with the kids and don't come around when you see me. Because y'all went from pulling plugs on the internet to having every excuse why you don't want to deal with. Ain't no secrets up my sleeve. I'm going to come with the same damn sources. <laughs> There is no debate. There isn't, because you're gonna keep moving the goalposts. You said slavery didn't exist. Slavery didn't happen. Oh, 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 it happened in reverse. Oh, oh, this happened. Oh, oh, what I meant was, use the oh, 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 I meant was people, and we have not changed one thing since we started this nine years ago regarding the sources we put out. Why you keep shifting? See the difference between endo and oregano? 
Courtney, right? Phones don't work. Internet don't work. Oh, I can't talk right now. Or I'm in a tunnel. Every single time. Now, people, I just end this because this is a, the, the, the crap talking part. Now, y'all saw me out there. Last time. I said, now, if I tell you that I want to smoke right now and you claiming that you the big be all end all, why won't you rep right then and there? Because you don't know it and you want to frame some argument and go to your Rolodex of the same simple ass questions that have been beat up to try to frame it instead of dealing with the primary sources. One after another, after another, after another, after another. So with that said, I want the people who, who, who rock with me, please stay steadfast in your research and your learning and stop being swayed by this fuck shit. Stay strong and search for, I, I try my best to get, you now have a powerful resource in documents illustrated of this five books. If you go and choose to get the slave trade, fine. I'll open up my newspapers more. You can have the 15,000 posts. Let's up the level of discourse and stop with the silly ass discussions. The slave trade didn't happen. They never said that. They never called themselves African. They never said this. They never said that. It's been a decade now. Social media wokeness needs to grow up as well. If you're still talking Omex, you're a dinosaur. And these babies, they're not babies anymore. You're not talking to millennials. You're talking to people younger than them. They don't care and they think you're silly. With that said, I appreciate y'all tuning in for this long on a Saturday. And I do I sincerely hope you got at least one new thing from listening to the random dude on the internet. I do hope it's a force for starting conversation. I do sincerely hope you take the sources that were presented and research them and realize it's not me saying it. Okay? I agree, Callie. But they make every excuse. This is my point. They all, okay, I want to talk to this one about this and that one about that or whatever. Still, Ain't nobody from day one been talking this stuff about our people's history and on, and on this particular lane than me and this channel. That is point blank period facts. That's not to take nothing away from nobody else who's been giving information to our people. That's the cold hard facts. This is why the Negro pulls the plug on the internet and what you saw happen last night. They want to talk to everybody else so they can drag them into, well, what about 12 tribes? And what about Lucy? And what about Luzia? And what about the out of Africa theory? And what about this? All of this subterfuge. Negro, you said it didn't happen. You've been blown up on that. You said Harry Tubman was real, blown up on that. Ogun, this is where you drop the last bomb here, and Gullah comes right after and drops the big one. See how that works? Undefeated, Vanessa. Do not give up and fall victim to these silly ass line of questions. Ask them, were your people like maybe your people was the black, was the, the not even black, the Mexicans that were swimming when they swam to Wakanda. Maybe that's who they were. On that note, y'all, enjoy your weekend. I do hope truly you learn one new thing. Get your learned on. Please, if you did and you find it factual and you have the resources, share it with your children, share it with your family, share it with your cousins or whatever, but don't preach to people. Don't start preaching to people. Now you have examples to build with them so y'all can take this walk together. The preaching to people and beating the people in the head with your newfound Negro knowledge is going to turn people off. Baby steps. One document at a time, one, fa one fact at a time. Yeah? Simple as that. Please don't go out here, yo son, well you don't know about Elizabeth Donnan, what about this, Africa, Congo, gold toast, nah, nah. One at a time. Please.
the ladies, Vanessa, uh, Foxy Moon, CK, the brothers, Larry, uh, James, all the ones, Courtney, I said, all the people who have donated and whatever, and, and, and through the day, I sincerely, sincerely say thank you. Um, I, it's too many names, which is a good thing, because I mean, we got 70 some people, and I think that's awesome for me. That's like 75,000 people. So it was a good day, and I hope out of 75, 80 people, one person got at least one new thing. Yes? I said I hate long goodbyes, but y'all can laugh now. That was about a 15 minute goodbye, wasn't it? Good God Almighty. I got to get up out of here. I appreciate the time and peace.